A bipartisan group of senators are asking the president to reconsider pulling U.S. troops out of Syria. Senators say the decision emboldens remaining ISIS militants and amounts to the U.S. ceding influence in the region to Iran, Russia, and the Bashir al-Assad regime. Now, joining us now is one of those letters' authors, independent Maine Senator Angus King. He serves on the Senate Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. Senator, thank you for joining us on New Day. John, always a pleasure. Well, what I want to ask you is, you know, the response to this has been deafening. You joined with your other senators. Um, and our own Jake Tapper was told by a senior administration official that this was a mistake of colossal proportions. So when you heard this information, what was the reaction behind the scenes in the Senate? Well, the reaction, I think you can, usually it takes a week to put together a letter like that, the one you mentioned, and it took about an hour, and you have people like myself and Gene Shaheen, Tom Cotton, uh, uh, Joni Ernst, uh, Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio. I mean, it was uh, bipartisan, it was instantaneous, and, uh, you know, as I, near as I can tell, it may be 98 to 1 or 2. I heard Rand Paul thinks this is a good idea, but I haven't found anybody who thinks it's a good idea. There are really two problems, John. The first is the process. As near as we can tell, there was no consultation with allies, no consultation with the people in Washington, and particularly within the administration who deal in foreign policy and foreign affairs, who worked on the Middle East for years. It, it just came out of the blue on a tweet yesterday morning. And uh, what really scares me is, you know, how well, this might happen again in, a, in some very dangerous uh, situation. Uh, you want your decisions made in a systematic way with all points of view considered. Apparently that didn't happen. So process is very mm. worrisome here. But the other is the substance. I mean, the worst thing about this, for my mind, is that we're basically abandoning the Kurds. And the Kurds have been fighting for us. They've been working with us. They've been our key ally against ISIS in uh, northern Iraq and, and Syria. And we're just walking away and leaving them to the tender mercy of the Turks, which... Uh, uh, it, it, this could be really, really bad. And, and of course, it also hands a victory. ISIS now, this is a recruiting tool. We defeated America. We sent them home. Uh, and they're going to be recruiting around the world based on this. Iran likes the decision. Russia likes the decision. Our allies don't like the decision. Israel doesn't like the decision. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's just uh, it's stunning. It's just hard to believe that a decision of this consequence would be made, as I said at the beginning, with, without as near as we can tell, without any serious consultation or discussion. So given that litany of who benefits, Russia, Iran, Assad, um, why do Don't you... Don't forget ISIS. ISIS benefits, ISIS. too. Yeah. Why do you think the president made this decision, and do you think he can be convinced to change his mind? I hope, number one, that he can be convinced because the, the reaction has been so strong and, and particularly from members of his own party and people who are generally, I mean, Tom Cotton is on that letter. There's no stronger supporter of the president in the, in the U.S. Senate than Tom Cotton, but he signed on uh, yesterday morning. Lindsey Graham has been a supporter of the president and he signed on. So hopefully he will listen. And there's enough wiggle room here because all we really have is this tweet. We don't have any any details or timing and and I think there's a way he can in effect back off of this without uh, you know a dramatic retreat but I hope he's listening because uh, this is really uh, uh, bad for the country uh, and uh, the other thing I mentioned about the Kurds here's the long-term problem for the country we can't do anything anywhere without allies everything we do depends upon coalitions and allies who's going to be our ally when we abandon them in their moment of need, which is what we're mm. doing with the Kurds. Why would anybody come and say, yeah, we'll join up and fight and take bullets for you. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, sure. you're on your own, man. Well, so look, obviously condemnation in the halls of Congress, but praise from Vladimir Putin today in his press conference. And speaking of Russia... What, what does that tell you? That's all you need to know. Probably everything. But you, of course, sit on the Senate Intelligence Committee. This week, two independent reports commissioned by your committee were released authoritatively analyzing all the Russian disinformation on social media and the ways they tried to support Trump, his campaign, and Republicans over the course of 16. Uh, my question to you is, it's not explicitly in either of those exhaustive documents any direct connection between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Is that consistent with your knowledge on the committee, or may there be more to come? Well, uh, I, we're, we haven't uh, finalized any work on that 
ultimate question of whether there was a connection between the campaign and the Russians. That's, and that wasn't the purpose of these studies. These studies were really stunning, by the way, to show the depth and sophistication of what the Russians did on social media. The social media people missed this, the platforms missed it when it was happening. And to be honest, our committee, when we started out, this wasn't one of our major uh, points of attention. It has become one, and I give a great deal of credit to Chairman Richard Burr for really moving us on this issue. And it turns out to be this was one of the major ways the Russians were messing with us. And this, these studies, and, and you say there's nothing about collusion. Absolutely, that's true. But the studies make absolutely clear that the Russians' intentions were to help Donald Trump the studies uh, and are to defeat uh, Hil Hillary Clinton. The studies are also very clear that the, the big social media platforms were less than forthcoming uh, with handing over information. And one of the interesting black boxes is this question of these dark ads that Facebook ran with the Trump campaign and who they could have targeted. Uh, has the Senate Intel Committee requested those ads to be handed over? We are requesting a, a additional data. And, and the, the studies were based upon data that we got in the first round from the, the, the social platform from, from Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. And, and I must say, as I say, I think they missed it in the, in the beginning. I think they were naive about how they were being used. They seem to have gotten it now. They're taking it much more seriously. Uh, but uh, these reports ought to really uh, jolt them because, uh, you know, this is a very challenging situation, John, because we're an open society. We have the First Amendment. We have free speech. And the Russians are getting very clever. A lot of what they did they, they did create their own content. They created their own websites and their own, you know, conspiracy theories. But they also did a lot of work boosting organic American conspiracy theories. Do, do you see what I mean? In yeah. other words, they didn't create it, but they boosted it and, and spread it and, and used bots and, and made it much more uh, uh, powerful. One of their main uh, intentions, which comes through in this report, was to suppress uh, the African-American vote. They built, a, they'd spent a lot of work building up these websites to gain the confidence of African Americans. And then toward the end, they said, why bother to vote? Don't vote for Hillary. You know, she's not with you. Vote for Jill Stein. Uh, it was a very sophisticated program. Well, much more to come. And we look for a, a hopefully final report from the Intelligence Committee in January. Uh, thank yes, you very much, Senator. Thank you, John.